Laplace is a French scholar, and one could say he is a man of no emotion. He went through different regimes without much trouble, and we could even say that he does so with success. It was a difficult time though, from 1750 to 1830, a time of revolution. As a young man, he went to Paris alone and met with d'Alembert. He showed the philosopher that he was wrong, both about science and metaphysics. He did it just like that, without emotion. D'Alembert immediately understood. He found a position for him at the Academy of Sciences. Once there, Laplace proceeded to flood the Academy with new, thorough and remarkable results. Results in the field of probabilities, which d'Alembert disliked. No emotion. In 1789, he was settled down and he was about to get married to an aristocrat, a woman of low nobility, let's say. Unfortunately, or fortunately for his career maybe, the terror struck him down. He bounced back up in a spectacular manner when he earned a position at the École Normale de l'Entrois, a school created to train the new French elite. From then on, things went smoothly. He understood that it didn't have to be shepherded by any politician, whether they supported royalty, republicanism or Napoleon. Talking about Napoleon, Laplace met him in an interesting fashion. Laplace was the young Bonaparte's examiner in artillery school. Twenty years later, when he was crowned emperor, Laplace was the one to proclaim him so, but he had to mention, of course, that he was the one to launch his career. That takes guts, doesn't it? At the time, Laplace was being called the French Newton, which was a surprising compliment because that was coming from the English themselves, who were at war with France. Why a French Newton? Because Laplace's masterpiece, the Treaty on Celestial Mechanics, was a continuation of Newton's Principia, the mathematical principles of natural philosophy. One big difference though, Laplace avoided easy explanations that relied on weird metaphysical explanations or on God's interventions. Laplace got rid of all those old metaphysics. In a way, he was a positivist, even though positivism didn't exist yet. He stuck to facts to create theories, and he used probabilities, which was new at the time, and he considered that a priori metaphysics was of no use. He was a man that could begin a conversation with the other major scholar of the time, the German Gauss. Laplace was instrumental in creating a scientific power and giving it meaning. As a minister, he brought about immediate yet durable reforms. He helped create the metric decimal system, which still endures today, even though it was dismissed by the English. He also helped create Polytechnic's Council for Improvement, a council that brought together scholars, civilian and military engineers, as well as administration officers. Scientific power here must be understood as a way for science to be represented and heard among others, to create an equilibrium, an equilibrium that Laplace made sure to stabilize by appointing himself as the head 
of this Council for Improvement. Laplace's achievement was to create a sort of impulsion in the scientific community. He helped make room for the younger generation of scientists and he made sure to keep a certain ideological structure in all of this, to prevent religion from coming back front and center. He was the one that stood up against Napoleon when he tried to make religion part of a scientist's education.